today. Just a quick little intro. I know some people are probably still logging in. Um, this in front of me is a sample of what we'll be drawing. Um, we are going to be focusing on the monarch butterfly and the plant that it um, depends on, which is called milkweed. Has anyone heard about the monarchs recently? Feel free to turn off your mute and jump in if you have. Uh, I know about monarchs. Yeah. Can you tell me what you know? Well, I know that they, they live in, uh, they make cocoons and they, and then they sort of turn into butterflies over weeks. Yeah, yeah. And you can see down here, we have that caterpillar that will turn into the butterfly. Um, yeah, so the monarchs are very beautiful butterflies. I know lots of people who love them and, um, especially in California, where they're very common to see migrating. Uh, Excuse and, me? Yes. My friend, he's actually, uh, he's raising monarch butterflies. Oh, really? Where is he doing that? Um, at his house, he has like a small cage. That is so cool. What is he, how is he um, feeding them? Um. Well, I'm not really sure what they eat, but he um he just lays down a little bit of food. Oh, that's so interesting. Eat. I'd like to know what he's using because um, the reason that we're drawing this milkweed is because it's the only plant that monarch caterpillars can feed on. It's the only one that yeah, they- he has milkweed. Yeah, he must have milkweed. So that's why, um, Milkweed is very important to plant in your backyard if you can, or if you see it around, not to kill it. It's a native plant, which means that it is originates in North America, um, where the monarchs live also. And monarchs, they migrate all the way across oh, the entire United States down to Mexico. And they have to have that milkweed all along the way so that they can make it. Um, and milkweed is native, but a lot of people um, were cutting it down. They thought it was a weed. So it's very important that we not do that and to plant it if we can. So that's why I wanted to focus on the milkweed in this project. So we have a few people now. I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, and feel free to jump in and ask questions. If you need me to go slower, just let me know. Um, if you have comments, I'd love to hear it. Um, okay, so let's get started. I have here my sheet of paper. I have a pencil, an eraser, a permanent marker, and mine has two ends. It has a wide end, um, and a skinny end, this is the skinny end, but you could use whatever you have. And uh, I have some colored pencils and I have a watercolor palette set up here. So if you don't have um, colored pencils or if you wanna use crayons or if you don't have watercolor, um, there's no problem. We can do this a variety of ways. But for now, let's get started. The first thing we're gonna do is grab our pencil and we're just gonna do a light sketch of the composition on the page so we know where things will end up. So I'm gonna put down the sample just quickly so you can see that again and try to remember kind of how things are placed. This kind of, the milkweed kind of starts at the bottom and curves up to the right corner. And we have, um, the leaves and the seed pod coming off the sides and the butterfly at the top. So we're gonna start with making the stem, that line that's gonna, we're gonna follow for the rest of the drawing. So like I said, we're gonna kind of make a line and I would, um, I'm gonna press hard so you guys can see, but you guys can press lightly because we'll be going over this with the marker. And then if you want, you could erase it if it shows up too much. 
Um, so this kind of curves up to the right just slowly. And for right now, I'm just going to draw kind of a, a circle. Hang on. Let's circle in the top right corner. And that's just generally where the milkweed flower will be. And Do we make a curved line? Yes. Start here, kind of near the bottom. And you could curve it up towards the right like this. Do we make it all the way to the edge of the paper or no? Um, you don't have to. It's up to you. It could be beautiful either way. I started mine a little bit before the edge of the paper right here. Okay. But it can go off the edge. It doesn't matter. Okay, so does everyone have their curved line? And the circle at the top where the flower will be, the flower cluster. Once we have that, I'm just going to show you quickly. This flower cluster is actually made up of bunches of tiny flowers. So just keep that in mind. We'll draw those in in a minute, but let's get the, the leaves situated first. So now off of the central stem, or actually first, let's draw the other side of the stem. We're just going to draw a parallel line that just follows the first one that we drew. That would be the body of the milkweed. And once we have that, we're going to draw four leaves in this drawing and one seed pod. So now we're just going to mark where those will be placed. We're going to put the seed pod up here. So I'm just going to maybe about an inch and a half down, just kind of make a, a little stem coming out. It's about the same width as the, the main stem that we drew. And then the main shape of the milkweed pot is kind of a diamond shape. So just curve that out and up, come to a point, and then connect it back to the other side. Can you guys see that? And then just a little bit below that other stem on the right side of the line, I'm going to draw another stem, and this will be our first leaf. I'm going to take one of those lines from the little stem of the leaf and curve that out and just up, just a little up. And then where the stem ends in a similar shape to the seed pod, but a little bit longer, we're going to curve it up just a little bit and follow the central line that we just drew. And it will connect at the top like this. And once you have that finished and connected, We'll start the other side of the leaf at the same point, but touching that center line. Bring it out to touch that top. So we're going to draw three more leaves like this, and you can put them kind of wherever you want on the stem. Um, I'm going to put two more here and one more on the bottom. Just like these ones, they should be across from each other, but one just a little bit down. So I'm going to draw maybe my stems first. One, a little bit down, two, and then one more. I'm going to make it on this side. And you could add another leaf here if you want. It's up to you. And you could do it on the right side. It will be the same drawing process. Now I have this stem. I'm going to curve out that central line. 
out and up. Connect at the top. Now the bottom half. Central stem. Out and up. Connect at the top. Onto the last leaf. Central stem. Top line. Bottom connecting at the top. Any questions so far? Okay. Next, here's the drawing again. We're gonna place where we want the caterpillar, caterpillar to end up. So I'm gonna put him here on this leaf, but you could put him here or on any of these leaves because that is what the, the caterpillar feeds on is these leaves of the milkweed. And right now, um, we're not going to put on all of the details. We're just going to do the starting because we'll be finishing with the pen. And I'm going to just lightly sketch out a curve that kind of follows the bottom of the leaf like this, and then comes up over that edge on both sides. And then once I have that, I'm going to go ahead and make go over that line again, but make little lumps. Those are the different segments of the body of the caterpillar. And on this side, where he will be gripping the leaf with his feet, I'm going to make one more little lump and then draw in tiny little feet there, just clinging to the leaf. And then next, I'm gonna draw in these long antenna. This is the head of the caterpillar, but also you'll see they have two little antenna on the back of them, which is probably to trick predators, like a bird that might be trying to eat the caterpillar. Um, if they have antenna on the their back end as well, hopefully the bird would try to eat that end and then leave the head alive, the caterpillar could still go on to become a full butterfly. So on the head end, towards the end of the leaf, I'm gonna draw two long antennas. Wait, can you repeat the step to draw the caterpillar? Cause I just finished drawing all my leaves. Yes. So um, we're going to just sketch out where we want the caterpillar to be. I chose this leaf, but you could choose any of the leaves that we've drawn. And basically it's a line that follows the bottom of the leaf that it's sitting on. And then once we have that line right here, we go over that line and make them little lumps, which is the body segments of the caterpillar. And then once you have that on the top of the caterpillar, you go ahead and drop in those little feet like this. And then after that, we'll draw those two long antenna on the head like this. And then two shorter ones on the back end. And I'll hold that a little bit closer to the camera so you guys can see. Okay. So next I want to um, draw out where we're going to have the butterfly, which is at the top, on top of this circle that we drew for the flowers. So first, um, let's place the body of the butterfly 
which will be sort of a teardrop shape like this, right in the middle and the left of the, that circle. And then on top of that little teardrop, we'll draw the head, the shape for the head, and then two of the antenna coming off. And after that, this butterfly is will be landing on the flower, so the wings wouldn't be outstretched like it's in flight. They would be pointing it a little bit down. So I'm going to draw that curve here for the top wing, and then on the other side, coming from the same point, draw the left wing on the top. And to finish that top wing, we're going to make kind of a a wide W shape. So it will come out from the middle of that teardrop body, go down and then up a little bit and then out again and then come around to meet that line that we just drew. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. So that's two wings, we need two more. Butterflies always have four wings. And the bottom wing is always a little bit smaller on most, if not all butterflies. So we're just gonna have that, both of these come out from the, the bottom of that teardrop shape we do for the body. And instead of a W, this one will just be one curve like this. Come around and not meet exactly it won't be a straight line with this wing, but it'll come up and curve like that. Out from the bottom of the body, on the other side, curve around, meet the top. Okay, great. So that's the basic layout of our drawing. I'm gonna take my eraser really quick and erase inside these wings where that stem was in the outside of that circle. And if there's any other lines that overlap in a way that we don't want in the final drawing, you can erase those as well. See this here, I'm gonna erase that inside of that wing. Next, I'm gonna take my marker. I'm going to start the butterfly. Now, and we're first going to outline everything that we just drew in black. Excuse me. Yes. I don't have a pen. I have a, a marker. A marker should be fine. Okay. That'll work just great. Okay, so now that's nice and dark. Um, the next thing that we'll do is start to color in the body of the butterfly, that teardrop shape that we drew. And you can see here that there are spots on that body. So we're gonna leave some little white dots. We're not gonna color it in completely. The head I will color all black, but on the body, I'll show you the way that I do it. Um, I draw the circles first, like that, all the way down. And then I go ahead and fill in around that. Very good. Okay, and next we're gonna draw in the segments on the top wing, on the swing that we drew the W on. So basically there are four orange segments 
I'll show you how we're gonna do that. Um, first, we're gonna draw one kind of teardrop shape again that goes along the top of the wing, like this. And do that on the other side. And then do a, two smaller ones that fill in that first half of the bottom W curve. Same thing on this side. So that's three. And then the, the next one will be another kind of W shape that goes like this. It connects here where those two segments are. We'll go one, two, three. One, two, three. And then once you have those, I'm gonna bring up these lines at the top of that W uh, swirly bit and just connect it at the top there. And then on the bottom wing, actually let's do, let's fill in the top wing first, that would be better. So the rest of the wing outside of these patches that we just drew is just like the body, it's black with spots. So I'm gonna go ahead just on the top wing and draw in those little spots that I wanna leave white. Wait, what did you do? So after I drew, after we drew the main segments, these teardrop shapes on the wings, okay. the rest of this wing is black and white spotted, just like the body. So I'm gonna go around and draw in those white, those little circles that I'm gonna leave white all around these middle shapes. And then I'm just going to color around them black. And this part can be a little time consuming, but it looks really cool on the end. And it's kind of like making your own coloring book. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and do the other side. Same thing. Drawing those circles where I want it to stay white. All right, next we're gonna do a very similar thing on the bottom two wings. You can see here, it's gonna be again, two big teardrop shapes that come out from where it meets the body. And then back up, same thing on the other side. And then below that, we're gonna draw some more W type curves. Had four on that side. And you can see it overlaps a little bit here at the top wing, that's fine. It would do that in nature too. Nature is not perfect. And then same thing, bring those lines up, 
create those segments. And now I'm gonna do the same thing we did on the top wing with the white spots and the black. I'm gonna do that on the edges of the bottom wings too. Other side. Awesome. There's our butterfly in the flesh. Do you guys need more time to finish that part? Okay, I'm going to keep going. If anyone has questions, let me know. Next, what we're going to do is draw all these little flowers for the milkweed. And I will do one on the side here, that's a little bit bigger so you can see all the detail better. Um, but it will basically be the same flower just over and over again until that circle is filled. So to draw each little flower, we start with, sorry, I'm gonna switch to the small side of this marker. Start with a circle. This is just a test, you don't have to do this one. You can do it if you wanna practice, but we're gonna start with the circle and then the petals, which will come to a little point each one, all the way around the edge, like that. And then inside each petal, we're gonna draw another little kind of triangle shape coming out from the, the center like this, okay? So that's the basic for each flower. And then we're gonna draw those a little smaller inside of the circle and just fill that space up. Like that, that's one. I'm just gonna keep going till I fill that circle up. You might think when you see some flowers that it's one big round flower and then often it's made up of lots of little tiny flowers. Which depends on the flower, but sometimes they're called florets. Maybe you guys didn't know this, but sunflowers are actually the same kind of flower. Where the brown part of the sunflower that we think is the middle, those are actually all tiny flowers. And then the yellow part that we think are the petals, those are actually leaves, they're modified leaves. So flowers are weird and wild. Excuse me. Yeah. You eat the, um, like the seeds from the sunflower? Um, what, what's your question? Can you say it one more time? Don't people eat the seeds of the sunflower? Yes, they do. They're delicious. Yeah, but but the seeds are the black hole. The seeds, so the way that the seeds form in the sunflower, you remember I said that whole center are little flowers. Yeah. Um, the sunflower, when it starts growing, those tiny flowers all need to be pollinated by a like a butterfly or a bee and then once it's ready once it's been pollinated those little flowers turn into those seeds okay so at the end of end of summer you could harvest them for eating 
Yeah, actually, I once actually had a sunflower, um, but it sadly died. But the seeds were good. Yeah, the seeds are delicious. They're nice on salad or in trail mix or on their own. Did you get the seeds from that sunflower that you grew? Yes. Nice. Was it hard to get them all out? They're so little. Yeah, but not, we didn't all like dump them out at first. Mm -hmm. We just, whatever we want, a little snack, we just pick a few. <laughs> That's a good way to do it. Yeah. Okay, I'm almost there. I'm almost filled this area up. And this part also takes a while. So if um, if you don't finish by the time that we move on in the lesson, you can always go back after and just finish drawing all those little flowers. I'm just drawing little circles. That works too. As long as it looks like a flower in the long run. Okay, so I finished that part. Um, like I said, if you're not quite there yet, we can always go back and finish at the end. I'm just going to show you how to do each basic part and then you could fill in the gaps. Okay, so next, let's move on to the stem and the leaves and the seed pod. So if you remember, this is the seed pod. Um, and in reality, it's not just this clean shape there are these little kind of spiky bits on it before it breaks open and the seeds are loose. So we're not gonna just cleanly draw over this line. We're gonna start by drawing those little spikes, which are just triangles without the bottom. And um, I'm gonna place some of those to start at the edge of that line, coming out like that. And not going entirely up the edge, but just like every so often, Leave a little space. It doesn't have to be totally even. And they can be little different sizes. Like that. And then on the inside, I'm going to do the same thing. And they're going to kind of change angles a little bit as you go around the seed pod. And they're going to start to point up a little more at the top. Are these on the leaves? This is on the seed pod, oh. which is this one, which is the only one that we're drawing that's going to have the spike. Th these leaves will look a little bit different. OK, so once we have our spikes drawn, now we're going to finish. We're going to connect that line that we drew in pencil. But where the little spikes are on the edge, we're not going to fill that. And I'll show you as a sample on this part here. So I'm going to go along that pencil line. I'm going to stop where the edge of that spike is, go to the other side, and bring it down. I'm going to stop where the second spike is, and then finish the stem. I'm going to do that all around that edge, not where the spikes are. Any questions on that? Okay. Once that is done, I'm going to start doing the leaves. Does anyone need me to wait for a second while we finish up the last parts? Okay. On to the leaves. So each of these leaves will be the same. I'll show you the first one here. We're going to start with that center line that we drew at the stem of the leaf and just bring it all the way to the end. And then where the other side of that little stem is, we're going to continue that same line and just follow it, follow that first one and bring it to a point there.
And then once we have that stem drawn, we can just trace the rest of the leaf that we drew. Like that. And if you look at the sample here, the different segments, the veins don't actually go and visually touch the edge of the leaf on the milkweed. They're kind of like um, little, not, they're not teardrop shapes, but they curve at the top and come down, kind of like you're drawing an M over and over again. So we're going to just fill in both sides of that like this. It's going to come up and curve before we reach the top, come down to the stem. Same thing. We're drawing a really long M all the way up. Same thing on the other side, really long M. Connecting at the stem and not quite touching the edge of the leaf. And then these two leaves are going to be exactly the same. I'm going to bring out that stem, draw that second side. Trace that edge on both sides of the leaf. And then long M. Awesome. Leaf number three. Trace that stem. Bring the other side up to a point. Does anyone have milkweed growing in their yards right now? Or have you seen it around? I think I have some growing. Yeah. Do you remember if the flowers are pink or white? Um, I think they were white. Nice. Yeah, they come in pink and white. I don't, I, I've never seen a yellow one. Um, today we'll be, I'm gonna do pink flowers with you guys, but you could also um, leave them white if you'd like to pretend it's the ones growing outside your house. Okay, so now I have three leaves done. And on the last one where the caterpillar is, I'm not gonna do the leaf yet because we want the caterpillar to be on top of the leaf. So we're gonna do the caterpillar first. So as a reminder, here's what he looks like. Um, this is the head, those are the antenna. And then you can see on those segments, those bumpy segments that we drew, there are like yellow and black and white stripes. So uh, we're going to start with the black stripes, which are the thickest. And the way we're going to do that is first um, start with that curve, those curvy lines. Just trace those out. And then the head and the back. And we might as well just trace the feet too. And the feet are black, so I'm gonna color those in. And then along the belly too, between the feet. That's so. And now for those black stripes along each curve that we drew on the main part of the body, I'm just gonna make a little stripe along the back of each one. Little black stripe. And then next to each of those black stripes, I'm just going to draw a thin line like that. Okay. 
And the rest of that uh, color will add with the colored pencils and the watercolors. Okay, now that we have the stripes laid out, we're gonna color in the head and the butt. Those are also black. Just like that. And now the back, color it black. And remember that those short little antennas the back is also black, just like the head. So it's like that trick head to trick the birds to not eating the, the head. Trace the antenna on the back and then the longer ones on the head. That. I'm going to add one more little foot. It's missing a little. There's a little extra space there. And finally, the last leaf, we're going to do the same thing, but just don't go over where the caterpillar is touching. The stem will go up through the antenna. Connect the top. Top edge of the leaf, easy. And then this is where I'm gonna, uh, I'm not gonna bring it straight through that caterpillar. I'm gonna stop where it hits the head right here. Stop, pick it up and finish at the back. And then on the top, we're going to do that long end. Bottom the same thing. And where the caterpillar is, I'm going to stop, pick it up, bring it back down. Stop, pick it up, bring it back down. Where are we going to do it? Woo! Four leaves and a seed pod. Awesome. All right, last part with the pen is the stem. And that's easy. We're just going to trace it down. And just like with the spikes and with the caterpillar, where it meets the stems here. We're going to pick it up, put it back down on the other side. So I'm going to start at the top, bring it down, pick it up, bring it back down on the other side. Pick it up, bring it back down on the other side. Up, down. Same thing on the other side. Pick it up, bring it back down, pick it up. Bring it back down. Yay. There we have our finished line drawing. Doesn't that look like a coloring book? You can make photocopies and pass it out at school. So I'm going to put my cap on my marker. I'm quickly going to take my eraser and just erase those extra pencil marks. We don't need those anymore. And then I will get my watercolors ready. And if anyone doesn't have watercolors, you can use crayons or colored pencils. From this point on, it's basically like a coloring book. All you have to know is which things to make what color. And we're ready. Okay, so I have um, this brush here. You can't totally see my palette, but I have um, the important colors today are red and yellow um, or orange and green. Excuse me. Yes. I do have watercolors just on. Um... They're not out right now. They're in my box. Okay, you could. You do you have crayons or colored pencils or anything? Yeah, like crayons and colored pencils right next to me. Yeah, those yeah. are work fine. So just do use the same colors that I'm using for the watercolor, but with colored pencil. Okay. So I'm gonna start with the flower cluster, which, as I said, we're gonna do, make them pink, and the centers will be yellow, but. First, we're going to do a really light pink wash over this entire circle. You don't have to do it flower by flower. 
we're just gonna fill in that entire circle. So I'm just gonna use my red, but make it really thinned down. Or if you have pink, just go straight with the pink. And just put a really light wash over it. And if you were using a marker that isn't necessarily permanent, like a Crayola marker, it might bleed with watercolor. So I would- it's okay. Add... Yes? It's okay if I use the color lavender? Um, you can make it whatever color you want. I don't think milkweed is lavender in real life. No, just the color. Yes, if you want to use lavender, you can use lavender. But in, in reality, milkweed is pink. But you can do whatever you want on your drawing. Okay. So I'm going to let that dry a little bit, but I'll show you on the sample flower how we do each of the rest of the small ones. So it would be covered in the pink. Wash that we just did. That. So all of all of these are covered like this. Excuse me. Yes. Colors are monarch butterflies. What's your question? Colors are monarch butterflies. Where? What colors? They are orange. Okay. So if you want to color your monarch in, you can see here it's just those middle parts. It's not the white spots leave those blank. Okay, so to finish up those flowers, what we would do for each one is take a yellow colored pencil or a yellow crayon or whatever and color in that center. And then take, I have a pink colored pencil here, but you could use a red one too. Take that um, slightly darker color and just fill in the little one. It's not the big ones, the little ones going around the edge. So I'm going to do that on every little flower here, which again is time consuming. So if you don't have time to finish it here during the class, you could go ahead and finish it whenever you want at home. doing all of the yellow centers right now. And then I'm taking that pink. I'm gonna fill in all of those little petals, those central spots. You guys want to know another fun fact about milkweed and monarch butterflies? So monarch butterflies are actually toxic. They're, um, they have like a low level of poison in their body that's not poison to humans, also because we don't eat them. So they can't, if you touch one, you'll be fine. No, don't worry about that. But it's um, mostly for birds. Like if a bird comes to take a bite out of them, they'll go, this tastes bad, and they'll spit out that monarch butterfly. And the reason that they have that toxicity is because the caterpillars feed on the milkweed, which has that same poison in it. So that's why they, and that's why they only feed on the milkweed because it's a defense uh, strategy. So again, not poisonous to humans. Well, do they ever eat anything else? That's all that they eat is the milkweed. But do they ever eat like a different kind of milkweed? Nope, just this one. That's why it's so important. And uh, 
essential that we keep planting them. We don't rip it out. Because the monarch butterflies are endangered right now. I don't know if I should throw that. I should have led with that. Okay, next, I finished those flowers up. Uh, we're gonna do, like Amadea said, we're gonna color the butterfly in orange. You can see it's just these central parts. It's not the white dots on the edges. We're just gonna either use an orange already made. I'm going to mix red and yellow to make an orange. Using my watercolors. Just gonna go straight over those lines. Oop, that's not strong enough. I'm gonna make it stronger. There we go. And one thing that I like to do with watercolor is put a lot down, a lot of liquid, and then very quickly go in with my paper towel and I kind of bunch it up like this and I go straight down on it like that. And it gets kind of a cool texture. You can see like there's a little bit lighter in some places because it picked up the color. And that's nice for a butterfly, it makes it look textured. Okay, next we have our orange butterfly. We have our pink flowers. I'm gonna do green. I'm just gonna squeeze some green out and you can guess what this is for. It's for those leaves and that stem. Just like the flower cluster, I'm going to make this part light because we're going to go over some parts of it with colored pencil to make it darker. So I'm just going to get some light green. It's a lot of water. Test here. That's pretty good. And we're just going to fill in all of these that same, a same green color. Down all the way down. Excuse me. Yes. I'm not gonna color this right now. I'm not gonna color the stem right now. I'm just gonna paint it later. Sure, no problem. You can always come back to it. Any of this, you could come back to it whenever you're ready. Yeah, because actually before class, um, I was drawing a picture of one. Of a butterfly? No problem. Okay. Almost there. The three or four completed. Whoa. I'm gonna let that light green wash dry a little bit and I'm gonna go to the caterpillar. So like I said the caterpillar is yellow, black, and white. We already have the black stripes drawn. And all we have to do is add yellow because the paper is white. And we'll just leave that white stripe where it is. So how we're going to do that is I'm going to take a yellow colored pencil. You could use a crayon. You could use watercolor, whatever you want. And I'm just going to fill in in between where we drew that thick stripe and the skinny stripe. Just gonna do that. Okay, so it's hard to see. I'm gonna hold it up. In between that thick black stripe and that skinny one, the yellow. Ooh. Okay, next, um, this the leaves dried a good amount. So I'm gonna go in now with a green colored pencil, which is darker than the pink that I used. And we're gonna color in the stem and the middle of the leaf down here. And I'm just doing it lightly. We don't wanna, make it too dark. 
but it will be just enough to differentiate it from the part with the watercolor wash on it. So I'm gonna do that stem and then not, I'm not gonna do the whole seed pod, but I'm gonna do the middle of each leaf. And I'm going to do, after that, um, we're going to do the outside of those leaves, not filling in the bumpy parts, just the outside is what we're going to do. And that will provide some contrast. Okay, and we're gonna do that on each leaf. Not too dark, not too light, just like all the others. Almost there. And then if you want, you don't have to, you could add a little bit of shading on the, the bottom edge of the seed pod. I just use the color pencil really lightly, just on the bottom edge. But it is just like the line. Just pick up where the spike is and then continue on the other side. Cool. So that's the basics of this drawing. You could do it over and over again in different variations, put the leaves in different places. I also, if you wanted to make, you guys don't have to do this, I'm just going to show you quickly. If you wanted to do the leaf with the caterpillar and some of it eaten, that's a possibility too. Just might look something like this. There's the stem of the leaf on the bottom and the top, but it's not gonna come to a point. There might be little bite marks coming out of it. Cause that is what it does. It eats those leaves up. And I like to label these drawings so we could tell our friends about it and uh, you know why the monarch needs the milkweed. So this is the monarch butterfly adult. And you could draw a line if you want. Um, this is the milkweed flower. This is the milkweed seed pod, that spiky bit. And some of you might see if you have milkweed around, you might see um, at the end of summer, the seed pod splits open and then all of the seeds come out and they look like kind of like dandelion seeds. Like each seed looks like this. This is the seed and it has these long fuzzies coming off and they float in the wind. 
you might see those around now, actually. I saw some the other day. They all come out of this thing when it splits open. Okay, and then I'm gonna label Monarch Caterpillar. And you could label the leaves too, if you want. Not the leaves. Great. Does anyone have questions? Do you need me to go back to any certain parts? Or does anyone want to share their drawing? I'd love to see. Come on. Oh, awesome. I'm, wait, I'm going to put it on gallery view so I can see better. <laughs> 